getting on stage for the first time, I was very nervous to begin with. Trial by fire here, throwing him into his first game against Bjergsen. It's a pretty tough matchup on the first date. Two Danes enter, one Dane leaves. We played really well as a team, in my opinion, for first game on stage. I think there's only one way, and that's forward from now on. Just missing West Point, but there should be enough to take him down. And that's Incarnation with the Living Artillery. That Ludens hit coming out as well. They're going to wipe down Team Solomon here. And Cloud9 pick up the first win of the summer split. CLG's new mid laner, Poe Belter. I have so much belief in this guy. I fully trust all my teammates. It's really nice to play on a team like this. Shifter gets his target. Now he's 1v1 Poe Belter, but it's only a few shots for Belter to take those kills for himself. And Counter Logic Gaming are going to come up with their first win on the summer splits. They did not lose a turret this game. I thought it would be good, but I didn't know that it would be this great. Welcome to day two of the 2015 North American LCS Summer Split. Coming to you from our studio home in Los Angeles. Now the fans are pumped up here in the Golden State for another action-packed day of League of Legends. The crowd is hyped outside, as you see, and a likeness of our own freak there. And here you're getting a look at Piglet and a special in the locker room a short time ago. They'll have to go up against this man here, Maple Street and Slushy, heading to the stage. Big game here for them in game one. Hello, everyone. I'm James Dash Patterson. It's great to have you with us once again. And joining me on the analyst desk to share their insights are Aiden Zyrene Moon, Joshua Jatliesman, and David Freak Turley. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Uh, it's noon. Every time. Learn how to you can't just let me have the good <laughs> <No>. morning. <laughs> it's morning somewhere. Good. Freak. Yeah, Hawaii. That's also yeah. true. Thank you yes, very much, Jack. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, it's impossible to draw any conclusions from just one day of action, but what conclusions can we draw from our first day of action? And don't worry, nothing you say here can come back to bite you later in the split. I promise. All right, great. Incarnation is either overhyped or needs room to grow. I'll leave it open for interpretation. <laughs> um, a, a actually pretty bad performance as far as first games in the LCS go got absolutely styled on by Bjergsen. He said he was nervous. It could be land traders, could be a lot of things. To his credit, he managed to somewhat hold on to composure, right? Didn't feed, didn't tilt in his lane, let himself be carried. To be fair, I wouldn't have done that. I would have gone 0 yeah. 10. So props to Incarnation for being better than me. Um, we'll see how he goes throughout the split, though. The rest of C9 did play very well, and, you know, he was thankfully light enough to right into the win. But I disagree with that. I feel like it was just the nerves and the CSing. I feel like his team fight positioning after he got caught out, he only had two deaths that game, Sure, was good. He, we, you're going to have a bad time when you're up against a Victor who's a counter matchup, who gets fed Raptors level one, gets a gank, and your flash blown early from a jungle gank. Is He did the best in that situation that he could have, despite that CS. That's the only thing I would really knock him for sure. after that performance. But sure, to be fair, it's like 60 unforced errors in terms of missing minion kills. So that like that is that is a, a low point. But again, right, we'll see where he goes from here. Yeah. Right, Team fought well, bad landing phase. Yeah. Um, a team that I want to look at, though, is CLG. Because at the end of last split... They kind of just abandon all their winning strategies and team comps. And now they seem to be in a much better place going back to what was winning them games at the beginning of the season last season. That's something that I want to see from them more because they like threw it out the window. And when you're feeling out the league, going back to what you know is the right thing to do. Playing it safe, playing to these strategies. And the thing that I really liked about the, the interview that we had with Afromu was he was saying, we didn't get a lead off of the lane swap that, like they normally did in scrims. And then they created a lead through double lift in the bottom lane with arrows and actually just outperforming there. So mm -hmm. that was something that I thought was really good because they didn't get their typical lead and they created one themselves, not just off of map play. And then they transitioned that into rotational play afterwards. So having more ways when your strategy goes awry is the right thing to do. And yeah. I absolutely like that from CLG. Well, I really want to see that go up against Team Impulse, honestly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because Team Impulse is the team that I was watching a lot closely yesterday. The way that they had so much potential in the last split, and then the bottom kind of fell out in the playoffs, to see them come back in this split, four champions that they didn't play in the spring, they played in their first game, but then they kind of maintained a very crazy aggressive style, uh, just fighting all the time. But it was clean play, it showed their skill, it showed their fearlessness. I think this team still has a lot of upside, but now they have experience, they have the full roster from week one, they have the coach from week one, and I want to see them grow this split. 
All right, well, there was a ton of action yesterday, and with that action came a lot of big moments. Let's pull up some of your favorite moments from day one with the hashtag LCS Big Plays. We start with a highlight from TDK versus Team Liquid. J Shadow Flames says, Quas is a wall slamming god. Let's see if he's right. Let's see. There's the flash. Tibbers oh coming my. in. The hook means he's going to be hitting Meganar and TDK's. Oh no. Four man. Our ultimate with Bishu in the back was to the hands of Latman, who just came up from being dead, and he wants revenge. Oh my oh, god. Four man Gnar ultimate into the wall. Into this. Quas again. Almost with a perfect bar ready to gnar out, and he gets activated actually by that Rumble ultimate. They are flying right through. He tries to throw everybody against the wall. Three man, technically. <laughs> oh, yeah, true, man. Was, oh, yeah. Right? I thought it was oh, a four man. I just realized it was a three, uh, three man because Seraph is like walking back out of the pit. This is Quas's moment, man. Wow. <laughs> All right, yeah, confirmed. But, uh, he led. Not I don't think play anymore. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, but any, anyway, I really like that four. second one because as soon as he got like those extra items to give himself that magic resistance, he was able to create a, an advantage in a situation where they were actually a little bit behind at that point in the second one where it was like, oh, God, my team's dead. I'm 1v4ing. And then he's like, oh, I can get some kills here. I can make a little comeback and salvage the situation. Yeah, Quas definitely coming up big for the team yesterday in that game. But the one big play to rule them all came from Enemy versus Gravity. The base cannon writes, Otter with the happy feet on Vayne. Here it is. Body drop forced to run. Otter has joined in. Move forward oh. to flash away from Barry. Body low. drop goes down. Anox gets a kill, but it's going to be traded back on. But the Vayne cleanup is here. What can he actually kill? Goes for Hanser. Takes a lot of damage. TP comes in. Two more hits will kill him. There's flares, there's the slowdown, there's the kill on the Keen. That is an ace for enemy esports. I'm TPing. Nice, dude, nice, dude. Nice. Keep going. Good job, good job. Nice, 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 nice. 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 Good, nice. Job, nice. Guys. Drag good job, guys. Good job. There we go, boys. Audit pushed up. Audit. Get top. Audit. That's the enemy. Okay. I gotta say with full confidence, Otter is one of the best two vein players you guys have seen on camera in the last 25 seconds. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> this is Otter's no. moment. You just no, did no, no, everything no. in your power was, to take that, that away was, from him. <laughs> no, that was absolutely great by Otter, honestly. Um, it, it, it's, I disagree. <laughs> no, I, yeah. so, I feel so like all techs are better vein than you are. <laughs> 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 well played. All right. Well played. But Freak, no, but, freak, uh, but freak slides as, into the top three. As, as, far as, as far as the clip goes, though, to be completely fair to Otter, like, um, you could like nitpick so many things in that one. Like, oh, but he, he could have like chased Hecarim down sooner. The thing is, you've got to basically predict whether they're going to get attacked or whether they're going to run away. So like a tumble backwards when Hecarim leaves, like, oh, I'm not in range anymore. So like you could like point out these like mistakes, but he's just trying to read the situation. Honestly, did very well to stay alive. Number one goal of an AD carry. So I mean, I got to say it was a good fight by Otter. If he tumbled forward, it may have made them back up further away from the teleport. So sure, right. And then rumble backwards seemed anything. to be the best option there. Absolutely. All right. Well, the mechanics are on point there for Otter. Then let's see how those big plays affected the standings we've got half of the league tied for first who would have guessed with one win each including newcomers enemy esports then tied for sixth place each with one loss our gravity teammate dignitas tdk and tsm we'll see how that changes after our five games today we're starting those off with team liquid versus team eight after that team dignitas will challenge cloud nine followed by team impulse versus counter logic gaming now before we hand it off to our casters for game one we want you to cruise over to Twitter and share how you show your team pride. Send pictures of your teammate murals, your double lift cosplays, or share some snapshots of those homemade TSM action figures that we know you have. We want them all. We're at LOL Esports and use the hashtag LCS so we can highlight a few of the best later in the broadcast. But now, we're wasting no more time here at the desk with pity discussions, <laughs> uh, petty discussions about who's the best in vain. We're going to send it over to the caster desk to set up for our first game. Thank you very much, Dash. And while I'm sure me, Kobe, and everybody else would love to watch you guys for another 10, 15 minutes, we do have games <laughs> to get in. And I am Riving to Biz in the third along with Sam, Kobe, Hartman, Kenzo today to start off the second day of the summer split. How are you feeling, Kobe? Great. There you, there you go. We're about to hit the rift for our first match of the day. Team Liquid versus Team 8. Both of these teams, I would say both, one coming off with a win yesterday and hopefully keeping that momentum. Yeah, uh, in their first game, Team Liquid were able to take down TDK, but they did make quite a few mistakes, and they right. looked a little bit shaky. You know, X Special in particular shared some of his frustrations on how they performed on Twitter, but two players that 
definitely showed up and performed extremely well were Quas and Dominate. We saw the Quas montage already. He got off to a really strong early start, 3-0 off of his teleport, which propelled him into a very strong late game where he dominated with all those multi-man ultimates. Mm -hmm. Dominate as well had a really strong game, getting there for quite a few counter ganks just in the nick of time, and his Gragas ultimates also were very, very accurate. Right spot at the right time, and this matchery, this matchery, this match up history has, uh, so this matchup has some history, if you will. Words are easy. We'll get through this day. <laughs> if history we look back at the spring split, yeah, right. It was Team Liquid that knocked out Team 8 out of the spring playoffs. So Team 8 may be looking for some good old-fashioned best serve cold revenge here. That, that's true. You know, Team 8 will also be looking to rebound after that disappointing first game. Yeah. They were thrown off by Impulse's fast-tempo game. We talked about Quasa's NAR, Kali Trolls also played NAR, but it was into Yasuo, which has emerged as this niche counter pick, and he was not able to come back yeah, from that really different. rough early game matchup. But one player that stood out for the team, not surprisingly, was Slushy. He had himself half of the team's kills on Ziggs, and he put up a valiant effort trying to help the team get their first victory. It always seems like a a guy they can kind of get on his shoulders when they need to get through the game. He was the one that made big moves versus Team Solo mid last split, so we'll see if he can keep doing it, as you said. And as Team 8 prepares for today's game, Porpoise says they will have to decide on a tactic to deal with Team Liquid's carries. Uh, yesterday, both Piglet and Phoenix looked really strong, and they're going to be a big threat in our game, so we might want to shut them down or in, uh, avoid them altogether and try to uh, play on other sides of the map. So we might... Uh, make some counter strategies to that, or we're going to try and uh, put more pressure on their lanes and try and shut them down. Very interesting. <laughs> we might run away. We might try and shut them down. <laughs> and it's interesting as well because they don't mention Quas in that, which was a huge factor for Team Liquid. It'll be very, very surprising yeah. to see if that's somebody they don't focus throughout this game. Let's check out the starting lineups as we get into it. On the blue side, it is going to be Team Liquid. That's Quas in the top lane, dominating the jungle. Phoenix in mid with Piglet at 80 carry and a special at support. And on the red side, it's Team 8. Up top is Cali Trolls. In the jungle, Porpoise, mid Lushi, AD Carry, Maple Street, and Support Dodo. Strong games looking for the top lane, as we said, for Quas there. They'll probably look to get him something strong to start it off once again, now that they're going to be on blue side here and just kind of roll with the game. I don't think they have to pull any punches off the start. Team Liquid should be able to play this nice and easy. Yeah, one thing from yesterday, our first day of the North American LCS split, I noticed uh, Kalista was banned or first picked in every single game. I do mm -hmm. not expect that to change here. Teammates, they talked about the threat of Piglet. Definitely going to ban that champion versus Team Liquid. Don't think they're going to let that one get through. Um, so at this, at this game, at this kind of point in time for the LCS players, why is Kalista fitting in so well with these compositions? Uh, not only because of her really strong laning phase, um, but she can snowball very quickly as well. She's an AD carry that brings both a lot of damage as well as utility. Her ultimate brings quite a lot of utility from the bottom lane, allowing for a lot of engages, and it yeah. makes the lane really safe too. So it's hard to target the bottom lane because uh, you can s use it as a saving tool for the support and pull them out of danger. Right, get them right out. Actually waiting quickly on getting Piglet a new headset right quick. His mic wasn't communicating as well as he would want for the teams. And that's something you kind of need in game. Mm -hmm. Team Liquid has been doing a lot more communicating with Piglet lately, and he has been vocal throughout these. Also, talking about Kalista a bit in that bot lane, it did get Expecial and Piglet into some trouble yesterday as they disrespected <laughs> the lane, and they kind of got hit for that in the counter gank themselves. So we'll see if they've righted that ship a little more composed in lane and giving respect to their laning partners. Right. And the thing is there, the reason they got ganked is because there's so much threat with the Callista Annie lane. Right. Yeah. That's the reason that <laughs> so they, they first the picked it. Yeah. So Expecial, he's always been known as a support that's very cautious. Uh, and yeah. that was one small uh, time when the jungler was able to out mind gain them. Jat pointed out during the game that their jungler was just seen you know, up in the jungle. And so yeah. he took a very out of the way route down to go gank them and, you know, capitalize on it, caught Piglet in a special off guard. Really strong move by the jungler. I feel like that might be something that can happen today as well. Maybe not taking teammate, you know, for their full potential. Porbus can definitely still make some moves out of the jungle. He's one of the, I would say better junglers, but I definitely like keeping an eye on him. He was 
don't know, outspoken with his picks at the end of the year and kept kind of with what won the games for them. And he was always a star player. So looking at Porpoise for me in the jungle here, as Porpoise himself is looking at the carries, is looking at Phoenix and Piglet, making sure they can kind of get shut down. It'll be interesting. Sounded like there was a little lack of focus in his uh, pip shot. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, there's so many carries on this team. <laughs> Maybe we'll shut them down. Maybe we'll, Maybe we'll shut this them. guy down. That, that part comes to it. I feel like if this gank doesn't work, then we hope the second one is. It's kind of you don't have something set in place that if the first one doesn't work in the bottom lane, if we blew that flash, we'll go back. I feel like they're kind of going to be a little watery in where they go with their strategies. We'll have to see, though. This is all speculation. For uh, Dodo there, he's also got a keyboard issue now. So a mm. couple issues for everybody getting cleaned up before we get into the game. Now, for Team Liquid, yes, yesterday they did get their victory, um, but there were some early games and some individual plays that they could clean up. Yeah. Phoenix, I know, was frustrated with himself uh, for his early overzealous chase into the turret range mm -hmm. where Bishu was able to capitalize on him and get that beautiful one versus one kill. Yeah. Special um, talked about the frustrations in the bottom lane. A few things that the team probably talked about with Peter over the night to make sure those would not happen coming into today. They, they kept their composure, though, uh, yep. throughout the early game. And then, after a single dragon fight, were able to leverage that into a victory. And that's what you see uh, from these more veteran teams and from the guys that have been sticking around. This, again, Team Liquid is one of the teams, yeah. uh, of about half of the teams that stayed in the North American LCS, that kept their rosters exactly the same to try and build on uh, the team atmosphere and the camaraderie. It is true, and I think it, that's a kind of a big point for Team Liquid as well, is that they, they did stay the same, and this is a kind of a fresh start. Coming out with a win, I think even helps more with that mentality where it was tough to get things going with Piglet last season. Even though they didn't start with him and were able to kind of go from the get-go, things are now starting to come around. Yeah, it's a, definitely an emotional team, Team Liquid. <laughs> that's a <laughs> good way to put it. They've got Dominate on there, um, Phoenix as well, and Piglet, both these guys all very uh, heavily influenced yeah. by success. I think Quas the least. Yeah, He's Quas. pretty much okay with everything. <laughs> He'll smile sometimes when he gets like legendary or pentakill in a game, but it's got to be something that's up there. That's right a, now, he's smiling that's already. That's as animated as I've ever seen Quas. <laughs> he's thirsty. Must he's thirsty. take a drink. He's ready. <clears throat> he's getting ready to be Quas in this game, though. Wonder what will happen. We saw some interesting picks from Impulse yesterday that have kind of floated around in the hands of Quas and other, chan or other players on Liquid, like those Fizzes and the Yasuos. So it could be interesting here as we start off. I'd like to see more teams pick those up. Definitely. One of the um, biggest picks, what, for me, of course, the jungler, was Evelyn. Just because ah. Evelyn enables your team to do so much more um, that other junglers cannot you know, possibly have, except for right. maybe Shaco. So because she can bypass all green wards and trinket wards early on in the game, it enables your team to pick more aggressive matchups for solo lanes uh, because there is that mm. uh, constant threat of where is Evelyn. Also, jungle has always been this, this game based around information. Information is basically the most uh, highly valued commodity for junglers. And Evelyn gives away the least amount of information. You have to get very deep into her jungle, yeah. uh, place wards to actually figure out um, where she's been in the last 30 seconds. And then you're supposed to use that information uh, to extrapolate where she will be for the next 30 seconds. Um, so Evelyn just adds so much unpredictability. And once she, every time in the meta, when she gets to mm -hmm. the point where she's buffed enough, uh, her combat stats, just base combat stats, that right. she's strong enough to actually compete in hand-to-hand -hand combat with a lot of the other junglers, the added benefit of the perma stealth always makes her a very, very strong pick. So when you're looking for Evelyn, let's put this up and say that Dominate gets it or Porpoise gets it. If you kind of miss finding that Evelyn, if you miscalculate, what is that jungler's purpose then? Do you, do you keep trying to find her or do you just try to set up a counter gank and hope she comes to that lane? If... if Evelyn's opponents miscalculate yeah. if they're not able to find her. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing. It causes a lot of the other lanes to play more cautiously. So you can't go for, you know, even if you have the opportunity to go for a beneficial trade. So this is how you win a lane. You you take the trades where you're going to come out ahead Absolutely. on health. Win some CS, get the back. You have to back. second guess yourself if there is an Evelyn on the other team and you haven't been able always. to keep track of her. That's uh, kind of the way you always should play. You always think that somebody's in the brush next to you, somebody's there, but with Evelyn, it's actually considered because you, you haven't found her yet. Nobody's 